on June 30th. So you're not gonna, you're not going to, since we didn't actually make the asset until June 30th, we're not going to record any accumulated depreciation on it. Does that make sense? Are we good with number 15? Yes. Good with the calculation? No? Yes? Amy? Yeah. It's good as it's going to get. Yeah. Okay. So there's number 15. Accumulated depreciation and depreciation expense. Number 16. Number 16 is going to be our recording of... Um, uh, interest expense at the end of the year, okay? Because we pay it semi-annually, right? Remember back from number seven, we pay semi-annually. So we have to make an interest payment at the end of the year, right? Yes, maybe. Okay. So for number sixteen, I think I left this calculation. Let's see. I did. So, I'm going to pay 5% of 20 million. Why? 5% Those were my beginning bonds payable, right? So, I have to pay interest on those. All right? 5% of 20 million. Plus 5% divided by 2, so 2.5% because it's semi annual times the 5 million, or the... 50. Is it 50 million? No, it's 5 million. 5 million dollar bonds that I took out this year. Yeah. Yes? And then, I'm going to subtract from that the 500,000 I already paid in interest expense. Does that that's, make sense? That's the you paid in number 14. Yeah. That's correct. So, for whatever reason, I made an interest payment in the middle of the year toward the interest that I was going to have to pay. I can't explain why that happened, other than they were trying to get some of it paid, right? They are using up cash. So here's that equation written out a little bit bigger. So this is the interest I have to, that I have to pay on the old bonds. This is the interest I have to pay on the new bonds. This is the interest I paid during the year toward this interest payment. I'm splitting the 5% these bonds are still 5% bonds. I'm splitting it in half because they were issued in December and they're now payable in June. The interest is payable in June. It's a semi-annual interest payment, right? Therefore, I have to take the annual interest amount and divide it by two. Split it in half. Okay? So, the total of that gives me the 625000 and I'm going to credit... Accounts payable and debit interest expense. Okay? So I have now covered all of my entries for the year. <coughs> okay? Except my closing entry. So my closing entry does what? Closes my revenue and expense accounts, just like in normal financial accounting. Close them all, put it to net position. Okay? So, if you take the 10700000 and you subtract all these pieces, you get $1,345,000. Okay? Good? 
why do you take the, why do you take, why is that your debit? Why is this? Well, yeah, where does that number come from? Th this number? Yes. Yeah. This number, it, it's the, it's the, op it's to zero out this account. Oh. That's the amount of revenue I brought in during the year. Got it. So I'm just closing these, right? I'm just netting them to zero. And then because there's a difference, whatever that difference is goes, right? It'd be the same as, it'd be the same as revenue minus expense is your net income. Your net income then goes to retained earnings, which is your equity, right? You're doing the same thing, different terms. Well, the only one that's different, I guess, is that. You're still taking your revenue minus your expenses, and whatever the difference is, it goes to net position. Right? So you derive that net position entry number from whatever the difference is, whatever the delta, whatever the change is. Okay? Questions on this? Yes. So what is the expectation of how long we should, how long it should take us? How <laughs> oh, long is going to take us a day? It takes three hours, is that bad? Or? No, I mean, when, when, no. They it, when they set up the class that they expect, they would, we would be saying it's an hour. I would assume, I would assume that it varies. Even between you and this class, it varies on how much time it's going to take you to do this. That'd be my assumption. So, how long should we spend on this? We're giving a moderate schedule and all that. I mean, how much do you think? Time, how much time do you think we should spend on this particular problem? No more than thirty minutes. Because right. length of the as, as much time as it takes you to finish the problem. Could we get one more day for this week, just for, for the size of these problems? Can you get one more A? Day. day. One more day. Not A, I don't think. You want to turn this in Friday night? Yeah. Because at least one more day. Because I got Friday off. So I can go with that. So I got that day. Last off. Friday of March. So we can turn it on Friday night? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. That's fine. Do you have any ideas for opening up here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's continue. But yeah, you have to spend as much time as you need. Let's keep on going. Okay? That's the reality of things. Okay? All right. Next column. Next column is just addition. Right? Next column is just addition. You're just adding up all of the entries that you've made. So for cash, you have 2,250,000 2, plus 5 million <coughs> plus 10.5 million minus all these pieces gives you 4,925,000. Okay. Do that the same, same thing, right? Same thing you would do with any other trial balance. You have your beginning number plus whatever change gives you your ending number, plus or minus, whatever change, right? Okay? So these are, these are just additions. This is one place where I would expect to see formulas. Right? Yeah. Make sense? And you can make the formulas however you want. If you'd rather use a sum and drag it through, that's fine. If you'd rather add up all the pieces, like I did, that's fine. Whatever is easiest for you, doesn't matter to me. But I, I would expect a formula over here. Okay. Then, the next piece, B, B and... C, 